According to Teresa's first of her three kids to learn how to swim. Next, we'll visit a unique high school in Faribault, Minnesota, where hearing impaired students are as proud of their trophy case as any other school in the state. back to our high school special. For years, the opportunity for hearing impaired students taking part in extracurricular activities was limited. But thanks to the work of the Minnesota State High School League, many of today's students are able to participate in athletic competitions, fine arts programs, and debate. Nowhere is that more apparent than at Minnesota State Academy for the Deaf and Faribault. Hearing impaired students from grades 1 to 12 attend this school. In order to participate in various activities, they must spend hours in the classroom studying tough subjects. We spent a day at the Academy for the Deaf and were amazed at these students' desire to succeed. For the benefit of nearly 40,000 hearing impaired residents in the state, Linda Galley will interpret our next story. It looks like most Minnesota schools. Hard-working students exercising their brains in class and their muscles on the ball field. The youngsters at this school can do anything other students can, except for one thing, here. students can do anything except hear. And that's, that's what we're trying to show. There's nothing they can't do. There are no goals they can't achieve. This is the Minnesota State Academy for the Deaf and Faribault. Here, 170 hearing impaired students receive a thorough education in everything from diagramming a sentence to learning how to drive. Wade Carley is the superintendent. And I really feel that we are a regular school and that the programs we have in our students, they're the same as any school in Minnesota. And that surprises many people. They will enter here and they'll say, you're really a school. The Minnesota State Academy for the Deaf was founded 127 years ago as a special place for kids who couldn't hear. Today, the state-supported school is one of the best in the country. Deaf kids come here to learn and live on a campus-like setting where American Sign Language, the native language of the Deaf, is used by nearly everyone from teachers to cooks. The Academy for the Deaf is the first school in the country requiring all staff to use sign language. Now we're the only state to have that. It's really created a lot of problems, but now that we have met, and, and most of the staff has met those established criteria for sign language, it's really a unique program and really beneficial to all of our students. Do you remember yesterday we were working on the passive? Remember? There is a tremendous advantage for deaf students learning from deaf teachers. About a third of the teachers are hearing impaired at the academy. Sixth grade teacher Tim Belf is a graduate of the school. Some of his deaf teachers influenced him to be a role model for deaf students. Being a teacher here is a very good exposure for the kids to see that there can be deaf teachers. Some students in my class maybe would be interested in being teachers in the future when they graduate from here. Having deaf teachers like Tim should help new student Philip Croson adjust. It's his second day at the School for the Deaf and Philip is lost. He finds communicating in sign or ASL harder than any other subject. I know some English. I know what to do in English, but I don't know a lot of ASL. Okay. Communicating in sign language can also be a problem for teachers. It slows down That's learning, why. according to science teacher Mike Sandberg. I know in a public school you'd say read chapter four and send them home, and you would expect that it would be done. Here, I'll give them time in class to read that so that I can watch and monitor to make sure they're understanding. I am just really excited to be part of a, of a time when we had a national commission on the education of the deaf that basically said this is what should be taught 
to all deaf children. Wow. Really establish the ways we should be teaching, emphasize the use of a natural language for deaf children in the classroom, really emphasize the importance of deaf role models in the classroom. Because of the emphasis on language at the School for the Deaf, hearing impaired students are prepared when they graduate. Shorten it up. Uh, deaf people are very highly qualified. They're entering college, they're graduating, they're earning, they're earning their PhDs. They're in very influential positions. Let's just start our normal warm-up drill, huh? Nowhere is success more apparent at the Faribault School for the Deaf than in sports. The school's trophy case is filled with many victories, especially in football and girls basketball. Mike Lochner is the coach. They compete as hard, they understand as much, they can learn as fast. Uh, just being sure that communication, everyone sees watching or if they miss a little bit, but uh, even working with the hearing kids, uh, you got a repetition. I think it's kind of important. Despite its ups and downs over the years, Superintendent Wade Carley has high hopes for the future of the Minnesota State Academy for the Deaf. He hopes the school will continue to graduate good students who can succeed in any field. I would hope that our students acquire the ability, the confidence to stand up and become a, a leader to advocate for themselves and not to ever feel it necessary to be dependent on a hearing person. To, to have those skills so they can just move ahead and become anything they want. That's our goal. And these kids, like any high school student, have dreams of their own. I can't decide. I, I like to work as a vet with animals. I want to be a scientist or maybe something connected with animals. I want to do auto repair. I want to be a football player for the Vikings, maybe. Or maybe a truck driver. <laughs> run, 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 run. There is one very interesting story that was shared with us when we visited the Academy for the Deaf. Apparently, a hearing-impaired quarterback named Paul Hubbard is credited with inventing the football huddle back in 1890. He had his teammates surround him so that he could call the signals in sign language and keep the opposing team from knowing what play would be used. And stay tuned. When we return, we'll see what the Minnesota State High School League is doing to provide more opportunities and extracurricular activities for the non-abled-bodied students.